In this video, we'll review the various ways you can customize your pad, such as choosing the languages, adding questions, and adjusting the code editor to your liking. When you create a pad, it opens in your default language. To add another, click on languages and search or browse to find the one you want. You can add as many tabs as you like. If you add one you don't need, hover over it and click on delete tab. Next is the questions tab. Here you'll find example questions, questions you created, and questions created by others in your organization. Search by name or filter by language to browse and find what you want. You can browse the content of the question, choose the desired language, and then click Add Question. It will open in a new tab. Next is Drawing Mode. Drawing Mode is your virtual whiteboard where you can sketch, diagram, and upload images without leaving the interview window. Drawing Mode can be moved around and opened and closed without losing anything. Before the interview, you can also preload an image or architecture on the drawing pad for more interactive exercises. If you plan to conduct several interviews, you don't need to create multiple pads from scratch. Just get one ready, give it a name here at the bottom, and then click on the duplicate pad icon. This will duplicate the pad with all the same tabs, questions and content, except drawings and interviewer notes. This is an easy way to prepare for multiple interviews. Next on the menu is focus time, a feature you can use during an interview to help a candidate feel at ease while working on code. The screen will blank out for the interviewer for a few minutes so the candidate can test and run code without the stress of being observed. We've found that this is a great way to give candidates time to collect their thoughts and perform better in the interview. Focus time can only be used once during an interview and can be activated or deactivated in team settings. The last item on this menu is the settings. Here you or the candidate can customize for your preferences such as choosing between light and dark mode, selecting your preferred key bindings, enabling or disabling IntelliSense, and other options. You can also verify keyboard shortcuts here. Candidates and interviewers can each choose their preferred settings on their own side. Next are some interviewer-only settings. You can disable code execution if you want the focus just on writing code, you can also enable a waiting room so that candidates who enter before you're ready can wait in a branded waiting room for you to admit them when you're all set to begin. So now we've set up the pad, let's see the main area. The left hand pane is where all the coding takes place. It's a standard IDE console and you can drag to change the size of the window. The right hand pane has several functions. Firstly, any instructions for questions appear there. Then, when you run code, you see the result in the Program Output tab. The interviewer can also view the Solution tab, but this is invisible to candidates, of course. There is also a private Interviewer Notes tab. Here you can take notes and choose whether they're only visible to colleagues who conducted the interview with you or to anyone in your organization. The final tab is the AI Assist tab where you and the candidate can access ChatGPT without leaving the pad. The prompts and responses are visible to everyone in the interview. This is a feature that can be enabled or disabled from team settings. We recommend allowing access to it, as it's a great way to see how the candidate uses AI to augment their skills and save time, just as they might in a traditional job setting. Finally, as mentioned earlier, you can change the name of the pad at the bottom to make it easier to find later. You can also conveniently check out new features so you don't miss out on any updates. And that's how you navigate your way around a pad.